Salutations respected viewers, this is George from Ireland and I'm speaking to you from an undisclosed location. Well, if you're very, very well informed you might just be able to guess where I am. Anyway, I, I want to do a video about the Kremlin Wall Necropolis. Behind me you can see the Kremlin of course, meaning fortress in Russian, so this is the Moscow Kremlin. Several cities have a Kremlin, but this is obviously the largest and by far the most renowned. Um, necropolis as in Greek for city of the dead. Well you see these uh, fir trees at the wall of the Kremlin and behind it is a small cemetery. Um, so in um, November 1917 fighting broke out here in Moscow. The Kremlin was quickly seized by Red Guards. That was the paramilitary wing of the Bolshevik party and they were fighting against whites in, in um, uh, Moscow, not, not to mean people who are racially white, but anti-communists, and they range from reactionaries right through to other kinds of socialists fighting against the Bolsheviks, and they attack from the Kremlin towards the State Historical Museum, you can see beside me, wanting to get up Tverskaya Street, and some of the first Red Guards were killed near that State Historical Museum. Anyway, just as a matter of practicality, they were buried right here in front of the Kremlin Wall, and that was the start of the Kremlin Wall Necropolis. So over 200 Red Guards were killed in the next few weeks and buried there, and that became a cemetery. Um, anyway, John Reed, the American journalist, was, was here at the time, and he um, published a book entitled 10 Days That Shook the World, which is about um, the Bolshevik Revolution to which he was, towards which he was deeply sympathetic. And he died in 1919, he's interred there. And he's the only American to be buried there. So um, it was the uh, highest accolade that could be accorded to the deceased was to be laid to rest uh, in this uh, graveyard right behind me. There you can see the um, there you can see the Lenin Mausoleum. Well, I've already talked about that. But um, he shared it with Joseph Vissarionovich Stalin, or Drugashvili, um, when he died in 1953, and he uh, stayed there till, let me see, 1963, if I got that right, when he was dug up and buried behind me. And you can see, very close behind me, uh, well, I can't do zoom, unfortunately. There's a tree, and there's a woman with a white shirt, white coat, walking behind it. There's some red, um, whatever, flowers at the base of it. Another person walking by, and that is the, um, that's Stalin's, um, bust on the plinth and he uh, is buried beneath that. So um, all sorts of top communist leaders are buried there in the Kremlin War Necropolis. If you want to visit it you must go down towards the um, uh, the State Historical Museum and uh, queue up, let me see, it'll be on my, on, on my right hand side, on this ha hand side relative to the State Historical Museum. It's only certain days of the week and certain hours it's open. It is free. I thought you're not allowed to bring a phone or a camera in. I wasn't when I went and then queue up and then you file in and you get to see the, the um, Lenin mausoleum and then obviously go to the um, necropolis which you see behind me. You see all the red flowers laid at the, um, at the base of uh, Stalin's plinth. So uh, the centenary of the October Revolution just passed on the 7th of November. Despite it being the October Revolution, according to our calendar, the Gregorian calendar, it was the 7th of November. That was the crucial date when the Winter Palace in St. Petersburg, or Petrograd, was stormed. But uh, there was a sort of deafening silence about it, really. And you can see some people came to pay their respects and lay wreaths because they wished to uh, honour Vladimir. They wished to honour Vladimir Ilyich Lenin behind me. There you are. But, um, the government did not officially commemorate it because they did not have the communist ideology and um, very few people, certainly, those uh, with power and wealth, did not want to return to a system where there is no private property. Um, anyway, before major events like the Victory Day Parade or state funerals, the uh, communist leadership, they would go into the Lenin Mausoleum to commune with uh, uh, Lenin, who was uh, almost deified by this atheistic state, and then they would be up there you maybe can see the staircases on either side uh, whilst the um, adoring masses were addressed by the leadership. And uh, famously, um, at uh, it was Brezhnev's funeral in 1982, his successor, Andropov, um, had to have a special, uh, special thing installed, what you call an escalator, to get up there and wheezed all the way through his uh, funeral oration. Well, and you can see more of the... More of the uh, uh, Kremlin Wall Necropolis. Behind me, you look very carefully, you might see some plaques on the wall. Yuri Gagarin and other luminaries are there. So, uh, people who are notable for uh, being generals, for their scientific achievements, um, for being political leaders, and so forth. Anyway, that's enough about the Kremlin Wall Necropolis.